Hello, Thomas. Thank We you. are here with you in Nuuk in Greenland. And I know that uh, so many are talking now about minerals in this, uh, the biggest island in the world. Everywhere on, uh, on Earth, the scars and signature of immense uh, stretches of time are recorded in geology, such as volcanic uh, eruption, continental uh, collisions and more. But can you briefly uh, explain to us what Greenland looked like, like before millions of years? Well, first of all, uh, I would start with, uh, with saying that the Greenland geological history is very long. It's about four billion years old. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> doing it in a, in a short time is, is, is yeah. difficult. I know. It's, it's developed as an amalgamation of different cratons mm -hmm. over time. Uh, and also, as you say, uh, continental collisions. You actually have an example here in the fjord system. And the only thing that's left is a small island here where you basically can see it. And you're absolutely right. We've had volcanic eruptions in the 60 million years ago in, in, in Middle West Greenland and the Disco Bay, Bay Area. And it moved over to the east coast of Greenland. If I take you back to, let's say, Cretaceous time, so that will be about 120 million years ago. Greenland was not located in a place where it's so cold. It was actually located quite further south. So you would have trees, you would have big trees, you would have you know, rainforests, you would have dinosaurs. Another kind of view. Huh? Totally, totally different kind of view. Okay. Because of its long geological history, Greenland has seen many different episodes of geological creation. And that is also one of the reasons why we have so many different kinds of geological regimes that is sort of, how should I say, uh, relevant in terms of mineral exploration. It is the diversity of the Greenland geology that basically sets up the possibility of these different kinds of, of minerals and metals. We know that a lot of countries are talking about uh, rare uh, minerals, but uh, can you uh, tell us more about the types or kind of these minerals in Greenland? I think what you're referring to is what we call rare earth elements. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And they're actually not rare and they are actually metals. Yes, okay. As you see, say, they are locked within these minerals. As I said, they're not rare. They're found in many places in the world. I mean, you find deposits, well, in China, but also in Sweden, in Norway. You mean we, uh, we can have the same kind of these the minerals in might other places be, the, in the world? The minerals might be different. Mm -hmm. These rare earth elements, these metals that are locked within these, locked inside these, these, these minerals, you can find them many places in the world. I'd say the three of the most common minerals that we have that contains these rare earth elements is yodelite, uh, kikorkamite, it, and it's um, acetonite. Actually, digging these minerals out of the ground is the easy part. The easy part. It, this is the easy part. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, you need to know how much do you have and what is grade and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but it's actually where the bottleneck lies is actually in the processing because these rare earth elements, due to their chemical similarities, mm -hmm. they are very different, difficult to extract and isolate. And this is what you need to do because we can't use the minerals as such, but we can use these rare earth elements that are sort of locked inside these minerals. But in order to get these rare earth elements out, these metals out, into their metal components, individual metal components, you have to go through a very, very long and complex process. And I think it's expensive as well. It's time consuming, yeah. it's energy consuming, and it uses a lot of chemicals, and there's a lot of chemical waste left behind. Some uh, reports they were talking about uh, melting uh, rivers here in Greenland due to uh, climate change. Uh, is it good or bad? That would very much depend on where you have your mind because yeah. Greenland is so long from north to south. So the, the the things that you see in terms of climate changes and the and and how that affects Greenland is it, not a 
one-sided thing. It's 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 very local. Uh, about uh, the the different types of minerals you have here in Greenland, are they mixed together? I mean, you can find one type and another one in yeah. the same place in the same area. They're mixed. They're mixed together. Very and this is more difficult, I guess. It is. It is. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. 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 I would say where the difficulties lie basically is it's a lack of infrastructure because you have to imagine that if you find something that is interesting to start mining it might be far away from anywhere far away from a village or a town and you have to bring everything yourself you might start to have to build a harbor you might start to build a road from the harbor up to where you want your mine is supposed to be You'll have to bring all your accommodation, so you'll have to build housing. You'll have to come up with your energy supply and your water supply and your sewer system. You might also need to have, depending on how many that works in the mine, you might even have to build a, an airport. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And all that costs money. Of course. And, and, and another thing that is, is, is making things a bit more difficult in Greenland is also during this construction, you might not necessarily be able to do it all year round because you have winter time. And it's difficult here. <laughs> yeah, so in other places in the world where you have the same situation, where, but where the weather is better and you could be active all year round, mm. you might actually be able to start a mine up within the next two years. But here, you might have to wait four years because you can't work in the winter time. And that extra time from two years to 44 years basically means that you well, you have four years where you're not getting any in, in income because you can't start the, start the mine. Once you start the mine, then you, got, then you start getting money. But there are other things that then places Greenland sort of strategically, strategically as well. That is our location. We are, I if I may say so, fortunate enough to have both the North American continent and Europe yeah. relatively close by. So you can actually, you can actually sell your products to other North America. Canada, US, or you can sell it to Europe. Talking about uh, the weather, mm -hmm. it's cold a little bit. Yeah. I think we will uh, uh, finish our interview inside. Okay, well, you. Let's go. Okay. I wanted to ask you about the uranium. We know that is so important today for technology and for other um, industries. Can you tell us more about the importance of this mineral? You could say it's not important in Greenland. All right. Uh, because um, there is a what we call a. It's not a total ban, but there 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 is a law that says that you cannot uh, you cannot mine for anything where uranium is a byproduct uh, mm -hmm. and there's set a limit that is 100 parts per million, basically 100 parts per million that basically is, makes it non-commercially viable. Uh, so in that sense, uranium in Greenland doesn't have value. If you can, for example, tell us uh, the top one. I think that would be hard to tell because there is a large diversity of these, you both have what you call specialty min uh, specialty metals, mm -hmm. like platinum mm, minerals. You also have uh, what we call base metals, so that would be something like copper. And you would also have what you call special specialty other specialty minerals or metals that would be cobalt or nickel or molybdenum. Uh, and you will then have these what we call these rare earth elements, these rare earth metals, which they basically are. So ranking them, I think, would be difficult to do, if not impossible, mm -hmm. especially given that you actually have so little production. I think time will tell which one that would be the most important. Um, but I think the main thing is that what people are looking at is very diverse, actually. Can you um, explain to us uh, what the use of these uh, minerals? Yeah, if we take specifically these rare earth elements, mm -hmm. They are used very much in extremely much modern technology, from your, your smartphone, LED lights, electric vehicles, in a vast amount of 
products that we normally consider day to day. Everyday thing. life. Yes, yes, yes. But they are also vital in terms of the military complex. Mm -hmm. uh, you use a lot of for in submarines or fighter jets or missiles, so they're also used for that. So you can see they're used for electronics, they're used for military, and they're used for what I would say is also what we normally call the green transition. So going away from fossil fuels into renewable energy. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you simply wouldn't be able to do this in an efficient way, because if you didn't have these rare earth elements and you could dope them, put them into these magnets, your magnets would be, have to be so heavy that you basically wouldn't be able to build a, a, a really functional, efficient wind turbine or electric car. See, many of these deposits that we have in Greenland, they have been known for many years. Mm. I mean, t decades, some of them even 100 years. But th there hasn't actually been any need for them because people didn't know what they should be used for. But all of a sudden, with this modern technology and this drive for a fossil-free world, all of a sudden, these minerals, metals, mm -hmm. they are becoming needed. And maybe because it's not discovered all uh, yet. And yes. that's why the interest is, is growing. Yes. There's been geological mapping in Greenland for hundreds of years. Mm. But we still only have one to 500,000 geological maps that covers all of Greenland. And that's a very good overview map, if I may say so. Mm. But if you're a mining company, you need maps in a 1 to 10,000 scale or maybe 1 to 5,000 scale. So what I'm telling you is that even though we have a pretty good overview sort of handle of the geology, there's still a lot of things that we actually don't know and haven't looked at yet. Mm. And I think that's one of the things that people also need to be aware of. I mean, in the US, uh, in the United States, they have one to 25,000 maps covering all of US. And US is about four times bigger than, than Greenland. So you see, the, <laughs> you see so, so yeah, there needs to be a lot of mapping done, basically, if you want to really know what the resources are in Greenland. So presently, we'll, the reason why we say potential is because there are a lot of unknowns in that sense, a lot of unknowns about how much is there actually. So that you mean much, much, much more. We used to say that you could, for the next hundred years, you could hire a thousand geologists and just still won't get it done if you want to make these one to 10,000 scale maps. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.